video that do not possess a smartphone to still benefit from, from the technology itself. So um, the solution has received notable recognition, including the award of the UN Secretary General on Innovation and Sustainability, an award also from the Government Blockchain Association for Social Impact, an association that is based in Washington, D.C. And it has also been featured as a case study by Gartner, by the company, the advisory company, Gartner Inc. So as former auditor, uh, since the first day uh, when I was uh, challenged with finding a, a solution to a 75 years problem of the UN Pension Fund, which was indeed how could the UN Pension Fund provide assurance that indeed those in receipt of the periodic benefit were still alive because the UN Pension Fund, of course, is dealing with a relatively unique problem that the, its clients are spread out around the globe. And therefore, for 75 years, they use a manual process, a paper-based process uh, to determine whether indeed someone was uh, still alive or not. I always ask myself and question myself as how can I prove to my board, a board that is composed of representative of, of 193 countries with different standards, with different legislation, with different experience, with different expectations. How can I prove that indeed the use of emerging technologies such as blockchain, but as I mentioned, in conjunction with biometrics in conjunction with artificial intelligence can be trusted. How can I build trust? How can I demonstrate that the solution is trustworthy, it's credible, it's secure, it's sustainable? And as a former auditor, and as a former, especially ISO auditor, I try to see it, to find whether indeed the ISO organization with whom I've been working through my career was developing or had in the pipeline any relevant certification standards or best practices. And that's when I found out back then when I called the office of the ICE organization Geneva and they told me, Dino, uh, we are about to issue a vocabulary of blockchain. So that's when I understood and realized that the dealing with emerging technology means that we are dealing with emerging standards. And therefore, contrary to more mature domain, such as the financial domain where we have generally accepted accounting standard principle, international financial reporting standard. We do not have the same level of maturity in the area of emerging technology, specifically of, uh, of blockchain. And therefore, I started my quest in trying to build consensus with like-minded subject matter experts, such as the, the, the British uh, Blockchain Association, to start building that corpus, that consensus, that uh, set of criteria that, if you will, could, would enable those practitioners like, like you, like myself, to not only build, develop, implement the support a blockchain based solution, but also having the ability to go in front of governing bodies and, and respond and provide evidence, evidence based. That's a, it's a sentence that words that uh, really caught my attention in the, in the way that the, blo the British Blockchain Association presents itself, provide evidence. About the due diligence that an entity an organization had followed implementing the technology. Therefore, I believe that there is strong alignment between our goals and the goals of the British Blockchain Association in its mission to promote, as I alluded to, evidence-based adoption of blockchain and DLT across different sectors. Therefore, I really, really much appreciate your effort in this area. So I Think that the blockchain technology offers immense potential. In our case, it definitely was the demonstration that uh, digital transformation is possible and when applied correctly can open a scenario where the sky is the limit.
for example, in our case, now that we are able to identify and create an evidence of transaction in the mutable ledger vis-a-vis -vis the relationship with our client, we can start providing a much broader set of services to those individuals and create an, an, an evidence which is independently auditable and traceable of those transactions. So we do need to ensure that the adoption of the technology is responsible and it, it is secure. So I believe that uh, working together, we can establish, we can build this set, this corpus of standards and practices that can allow indeed this benefit, the full benefit of blockchain. So. I thank you for inviting me. I will definitely be very pleased to address any question you may you may have, and either online or offline, because I believe that uh, the, there is a, a common mission that brings us together in this endeavor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, <clears throat> you know. Uh, um, has anybody got any questions? I just wanted to ask, you know, um, for your own pension fund, um, joint staff pension fund management, is blockchain being used? Is that something that you are using currently or uh, being explored for the management of the pension funds? So we are not using it internally for managing ourselves. But definitely now that we have provided this evidence, uh, we are, we have a series of initiatives. I think one of the uh, most uh, gratifying, uh, if you will, consequences of the adoption is that the application that I designed and implemented when light was deployed in January 2021. Shortly after, when I went and reported on the result uh, achieved by implementing the application, there was a recognition that uh, by my governing body that they realized we had just created a digital identity for those who were leading the organization because being a pension fund of course our focus was as i alluded to the problem that we tried to, to address in serving those who retire those who basically that uh, reside around the globe and they basically in instinctively said why don't we use the same technology, the same solution from for those who we are hiring and follow them through their career. We need a solution that would enable us to digitalize the complete set of processes related, for example, to human resources data, to security clearance, to mandatory training, to medical clearance, so forth and so on. Indeed, shortly after our implementation, the highest coordination body United Nation called the Chief Executive Board that is headed by the UN Secretary General. Immediately migrated and capitalized to create what is now the UN Digital ID. And we just went live with the first use case. And it's alluded to, there are many use cases exactly to address your question. Now, the idea is that we're going to use a UN digital ID based on blockchain to manage a digital wallet that will contain a series of management related data, HR, finance, um, security clearance, medical clearance and mandatory training, uh, entitlement benefit and so forth and so on. So that is right in progress, right now in progress. And indeed, we just went live with the first use case. So the actually, yes, and goes beyond the pension fund is actually now affecting the UN system at large and globally. <clears throat> Got it, excellent. And this digital <clears throat> ID rollout is that, uh something that um, is um, already implemented or are you is, it, is that still a work in progress and are is the plan for um, participating kind of beginning 
with I, I suppose the members and staff and then rolling it out to the member nations is that what the plan is digital id so so it, it is intended for the un internal administrative processes so it's not for right. member states but of right. course as you can appreciate we do report to the member states because they basically as i alluded to before they are our board that they are the representative that uh, sits so basically they approve the funds that uh, we are using to develop to implement this uh, solution to manage the internal processes of the un and one use case has already been implemented indeed it is us case related to pension fund <laughs> it's a coincidence because uh, we have had already a platform ready and the way it works is the first use case already implemented it's a use case where from the digital wallet of each staff member of the un there is a transfer a data basically to speak a little bit more technically a presentation of credential to the pension fund so what used to be transferred before through data interfaces and the pension fund used to receive data related to the financial and the HR history of a staff member in order to, to calculate their pension benefit, which unfortunately led often to discrepancy, to the reconciliation, to a lot of manual intervention because data was not correct, because staff members were not aware of what was transferred through data interface. Now, happens to a digital wallet through the concept of self sovereign identity. Where the staff member on his or her application on his or her digital wallet they can see clearly what data what information are going to be transferred to the pension fund and therefore correct beforehand rather than post factors that used to be before the correctness of their data and therefore the streamline already the process of transferring data from the 25 organization and the uh, uh, 500,000 UN staff member that uh, are working for the UN system to us. So we started this uh, with six UN entities, and now that uh, we started to document the result, we are bringing it back to the board, and uh, we are fundamentally aiming at increasing the number of all the UN entities that participate. I hope I address your question. Yes, yes, you addressed it very, very clearly. Thank you very much, uh, Gino, for your uh, excellent talk. Really interesting perspective. Uh, sure, thank, you. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining.